guys, hi I'm Craig and welcome to Jetworks. Um, so what I have here some simple scissors and the scissors I typically use for cutting out the patterns in the paper um, before sort of sticking them to the Depron. I generally cut outside each part by about five or six millimeters which is about a quarter of an inch um, around the edges. If I if I cut it exactly on the line, it makes it harder to see when you cut through the depth with a knife. And if you make it um, sort of two or three millimeters, it tends to mess up the knife cut through the paper and the depth So I would say a five or six mil um, cut around the outside is spot on. The other thing you'll need as well in, is a straight edge. Um, this is very useful, um, so you don't have to rely on your eye all the time when you're cutting your lines with your knife. Now, what I recommend is a Stanley blade, a uh, Stanley knife um, with interchangeable blades, something like this is you know, pretty good. Every time you do a park jet, I would suggest you have a brand new blade. They go dull very, very quickly, and um, once, they, once they go dull, when you're cutting through Depron, uh, you'll find that it drags on the underneath side of the Depron and it starts to really screw up your airplane design. So all, uh, for the cost of these, uh, not very much, uh, I would recommend you always keep super sharp. Um, the other thing is you're gonna need from fairly early on is some anti-epoxy. Uh, now, I tend to buy epoxy in larger containers, but you know, these, plane, these designs don't need much epoxy. Um, so um, something like this is perfectly adequate from most uh, DIY stores. Order it online, you can get it much cheaper. Um, I tend to like to go for about 20 minute epoxy. It's pretty spot on for me. You'll need some masking tape. Um, and uh, this is gonna be used for uh, putting the carbon fiber slot into your Depron uh, for your wing spar. And, uh, you're gonna need something like this as well. Um, some people like to use spray mount, uh, some people like to use this stuff, the Scotch um, Weld 77. Now, uh, they've both got the benefits, and they're all using a solvent based aerosol. So, you need to, if you're going to spray these on the back of your paper to help them stick to your depot while you cut out the pattern, uh, you don't want it to be too heavy, especially this one, because this is like permanent. So, you kind of just want to do a dusting, uh, a light dusting onto the, um, onto the back of the paper, just enough to tack it in place while you you cut out the depth on anything more um, this one will stick it solid and it'll just tear your paper um, this stuff is also really good um, again you just just need it enough uh, to stick stick it to the paper it's not permanent it's supposed to be repositionable but again it's got solvents in it so you don't want to eat into your foam so just like again a light dusting on the back of the paper and when the paper's uh, when it's dried a little bit then stick the uh, part onto your depth on And pretty soon into the game you're going to need some glue as well. I love this stuff, uh, although it absolutely stinks, it's, um, but uh, I, I find it to be uh, very good because it's um, quite elastic, it remains elastic and it has a good grip and it's lightweight. It's not perfect for everything um, because it's a contact based glue so you have to make sure it's on both sides of the joints and then you touch them together and it's really gripped so you have to be well, quite confident when you stick your parts together with this stuff. Um, but it is good. There are others out there. There's one called Foam Tack. I've not used. I've heard good reports on. Um, there's Gorillas. There's polyurethanes. There's a whole load of different glues. People like to use um, uh, Foam Safe uh, Cyanacrylate, which is a uh, super glue. Um, there's a whole load out there. But uh, I like to stick with this. I've used it for years. I, um, it's a bit of a bit of a favourite of mine. Okay. Before you cut gouges out of your table or your desk work in your workshop I recommend uh, if you haven't got one already get yourself a cutting mat you can get a3 a2 a1 a variety of sizes my my personal preference is a1 um, but uh, having an a3 and an a2 around are also helpful depending on what you're cutting this has got to be real important getting a sandpaper and block in fact I generally always use my sandpaper with a block um, only unless I'm doing sort of complicated curved surfaces do I sort of take their block away but generally even um, even on cylindrical sort of shapes like the fuselage I'll use 
sander paper and sanding block such as this. Even better than a sandpaper and block are pre-cut blocks with sandpaper stuck to them using something like a carpet adhesive would do the trick. The beauty of this is that it, the sandpaper doesn't slip around and you get nice crisp edges which uh, are nice for uh, getting right into the corners a little easier. I tend to use 120 grit when I'm roughing the, the shape out. My most popular grit is 200 uh, which I use for the majority of the work that I do and I go up to about a 400 grit um, towards the end when I'm refining the surfaces um, ready for or preparing for painting. As well as the standing knife I like to use um, a scalpel such as this um, and I use this mainly for trimming out the slots for the aileron hinges. I find an extendable craft knife really helpful too because you can slide the blade out and it becomes a really useful cutting edge. I use this knife a lot when I'm shaping the fuselages especially if it's got a, uh, a circular or a kind of a very shapely fuselage tend to, before I get into the sanding stages to get the, the final sort of shape, I tend to use it to take the bulk of the material away. So I kind of uh, drag it along the, the corner on a sort of 45 degree and take slithers off, slowly eating my way down to the shape that I want. But obviously it's much quicker than sandpaper. I also like to shape the uh, end of my ailerons, my elevators, and vertical stabilizers to give them a feathered edge effect to improve the aerodynamics of the wings and lifting surfaces. When cutting your carbon spars, I find a junior hacksaw is really convenient and a cheap way to get a pretty decent edge. Carbon tends to splinter when you cut through the edge of it, so you have to be very careful. It isn't essential, but the Dremel type tools are also really good when you put the uh, cutting discs on for cutting through carbon, make very easy and quick work of it. Also for cutting through aluminium tube and bolts if they're a little, little long and you need to trim down the ends, you can quickly take the end off with one of those. Electric drill is quite handy for uh, drilling out the control horns if you make them from wood. Uh, you'll need something like a 1 or 2 mil drill bit and a 6 mil drill bit for drilling out the standard size control horns if the design that you're building has got uh, fully flying elevators. Another tool I find invaluable throughout the whole uh, model making process is long nosed or needle nose pliers. You can um, sort of reach into fuselage and pull wires through because they've got a long reach. Uh, you can hold items while you're soldering and uh, you can also use the uh, strippers on them for removing the, the plastic sheath around the electrical cables. Allen keys or hex wrenches are particularly useful for making adjustments to servo stoppers. You generally only need the very smallest ones. For fixing your pusher motor to your pusher motor bracket and adjusting your servo horns, it's really helpful to have a set of micro screwdrivers. Another really nifty tool is the Z-Bend pliers where you simply put your piano wire into the, uh, into the jaws, clamp shut and it gives you a really tight and uh, accurate 
Z band for putting into your servo horns. Of course, you can bend your push rods by hand using a pair of pliers and a vise or a couple of pairs of pliers, but the results I found were very um, inconsistent. And the beauty of this is that it, it's accurate every time. You're going to need a 40 or 60 watt electric soldering iron. This will be used mainly for soldering your wires from your speed controller uh, to your battery and also from your speed controller to your motor, be it an EDF or a pusher. Along with the soldering iron, you'll need some 1mm rosin cord electrical solder. It's important to keep your soldering iron away from uh, anything that it could burn and a solder station such as this is a pretty inexpensive and perfect solution. When soldering your wires together it's often helpful to have some uh, helpful hands such as these to hold the wires in exactly the spot while you apply the solder and the heat. When I started out making park checks I used to use the uh, insulating tape and uh, which which was fine but I since sort of changed over to heat shrink tubing because I find it to be a much more robust and slightly safer way of uh, shielding your uh, metal wires. Although you can use a variety of different ways to sort of shrink your tubing, I find this sort of butane torch to be excellent. You simply put a cigarette lighter inside of it and click away and it works really nicely and of course you can refill the cigarette lighter um, using the standard butane canisters you get from the supermarket. Three D printers are here to stay and are incredibly useful as a hobby tool. I will be designing more and more three D printed parts for the range of part checks that I design. Of course, they can all be built without the use of a three D printer, but it is an upcoming technology that's here to stay and it makes light work of shaping nose cones, building protectors on your underside of, of your planes, uh, control horns, motor mounts, uh, lots of things can be made with a 3D printer. And of course, if you check out some of the prices, um, the costs are plummeting and it's rapidly becoming a must have tool for model makers. Okay then, this list was really all of the tools that I use over the years and have found to be you know consistently good it's not by any means exhaustive but it should certainly get you up and running and uh, making some really nice plates thanks for watching <laughs>